Hello, I'm Cameron Peterson. I work at the Rourke Art Gallery Museum and I also uh, am an independent artist in Fargo. Hi, I'm Jay Hopkins. I am an art instructor over at Northern State University and a new hire here at the Dakota Prairie Museum. Hi everyone, welcome to the All Dakota High School Art Judging Workshop. Today Cameron and I will be speaking about each team as a group, um, we're going to start off with North Fargo. In this piece here, we understand that the student has a very good grasp of atmospheric perspective. Uh, things that we thought could improve on it are just taking the ideal of atmospheric perspective and pushing it a little bit more, but also reflections on the water would help bring it in. That, and as a painter myself, um, I always like to bring in some extra little details when you come up in close and personal. We have a tendency, which is right, to paint as if you're seeing it from 10 feet away. But when you get up and intimate with the piece, it's nice to have those extra little tiny details that bring an extra um, gem to the painting, so to speak. Um, but I agree with a little extra color mixing perhaps using some complementary color mixing into your greens with some reds can create more interesting depth and value to the colors, as well as um, shifting in with those tints to put things, push those colors in the back horizon. And this is a good example <clears throat> of a classic still life. And I, uh, I just love the title for it because that's exactly what it is. Um, some things, I guess, that I would in push a little bit further is probably some of the value changes in the wire here, and then also probably a darker background to push it back or push the skull forward a little bit. I would agree. There were a couple issues of just um, detail of attention to your spatial difference between lighting and the shadows, especially down below. Great job with the tubes of paint and paintbrush. I'd like to see more of that. Um, getting up close and personal with this particular piece, I really enjoyed those little tiny details of the hairline fractures of the bone. Very nicely rendered. Uh, this piece was actually quite a bit of conversation between Jay and I because uh, it's done so well it almost looks digital instead of actually drawn and um, we had quite a bit more questions about it than we did answers but we did like um, the, the shadowing was done perfect and also a lot of the shading was done really nice too. I personally like the concept of a mug shot of our dogs. <laughs> um, Yes, very nice. If anything, I would push a little bit more of some of those shadows in the dog to create a little bit more of the volume. However, if you were, you know, going for that flat, more digital aspect, then you did a really um, bang up job. Yeah. Um, for a graphic design piece, this is very eye catching. However, um, I found some of the transparencies of color and shape a little too busy and distracting to the car, but overall the color palette I find is really a nice eye-catching color palette to this particular ad. And I, I'm kind of in agreement. I know that you put a hard time into layering these transparency, but if if the if the focal point was to get the car across all of a sudden you're starting to cover it up and it gets a little bit too busy over the car if the car is what's supposed to be the focal point of it um i really like the subject matter with this um a everyday act um always a great subject matter um i love the values and shifting that's happening in this foreground with the hand um Again, I feel like if you played around with um, your color palette, um, working with a color scheme, with color mixing, perhaps with those complementary colors to really push your shadows and highlights 
would make this even more powerful. And when I look at this piece, I really see a person understanding the basics of art. It, they just need to push it a little bit further, a little bit more value tones, but you're understanding blending really nice. You actually understand a little bit of reflective color in it and also shading and shape and, and the organization to move your eye around the whole piece. I really like this piece. I just think the elements that you're using have to be pushed a little bit further. Um, all right. Well, this particular photograph was very eye-catching immediately, um, not only with the format, but your control of your lights and your darks and the filtration of the camera. Um, for a self-portrait, I find this a very intriguing layout. Yeah, the fact that you use different perspectives and different sizes and broke them up, it's, it's almost moving cubism into photography. And so um, it's a very, uh, if you're interested in types of work, I would look at futurists. Um, they would be the big painters of the group, but a lot of more modern people too. Like, I mean, well, he's not that modern, but like Man Ray or... Perfect yeah, Man Ray is the yeah. major one I can think of. So Yeah. I like the um, fade out and jiggling of the eyeball. Um, considering you know the symbolic message of the window to the soul um i like that you emphasize certain features that um the senses that we use as humans in communication and um, this for our for our next session section of critiques it's going to be fargo south school all right um I always find it fascinating to use outside um, materials such as a skateboard versus a canvas. Um, gets you in more into that commercial art. Um, there's both sides painted on here. Uh, a shift of the color palette on the color mixing itself. I find the backside more interesting because there is more color mixing and blending. Um, and compositionally, the um, the format and space on the back side is way more intriguing than the front side of the skateboard. Um, anything, I feel that some of your colors and values could get pushed a little bit more. Again, working with those color scheme of complementary, warm, and cool color mixing. I find the same with the back. It has more um, atmosphere to it. You can feel the space that's in it, where the front of the board is a little bit flat. But at the same time, I kind of question that. I think that's the look you were going for on the top. Just kind of more of a um, kind of almost commercialized skateboard look. So very graphic and more flat than atmospheric. Very nice. This piece enthralled me. Uh, for one, I really liked the, the actual drawing reminded me of when I started drawing and how my drawings looked like. <laughs> so it touched me right away. Um, and the great mixture of the media and how it's sewn right to the canvas, I think was a great idea. Um, some hints and suggestions is with this piece, I can see you're concentrating really, really hard on the details. And so some of the value changes that are happening underneath the details aren't happening. So it gives it kind of flatness. So like it would be grayer underneath where all you have, where your details of your hair would be. Um, um, a little bit more too is I, I love that you put the reflection into the glass. That's a really nice additive instead of just leaving it blank. Right. Um, the highlights um, of the wrinkles and those details are very nice. The one thing that I feel like it's lacking is that information in the eyes since that's one of the key focal points of the drawing, um, more detail and emphasis on um, 
the reflections and pigmentation of the eyeballs themselves would be um, just that added touch to really punch this piece up further. It's very nice. I love those reflections. Graphic design at ease. Mm -hmm. I really liked um, this image in itself. Um, I found there was a little bit more of a juxtaposition going on between the foreground and the background um, that created uh, energy but yet some conflict. Um, the figure has such a simple stylized manner compared to the background having more of that high chroma stylization of color um, where to me using this color there should be some of that color incorporated into the figure or keeping that background flat so that that figure really comes forward. I'm in a hundred percent agreement with Jay that the, the portrait is good, the background is good, but them together kind of fight each other and then you lose the detail in this and the background becomes the foreground and like Jay said there's certain things you can do to help that is either take some of the chromes or colors and use them as reflections into the piece or take some of the skin tones and put them in the background. It just needs, I mean the background's great and the foreground's great, it's just together it's so busy that it's just dancing all around the place and you kind of lose the ma major focal point. With this drawing, I found it really interesting on um, the interesting details of the bones and the fabric itself. Um, putting that emphasis in that type of detailing, I want to see it in the skin as well with the face instead of all of the same consistency of your graphite. Um, allowing those transitions with your darks and lights within the skin tone like you emphasized in the clothing would make a, a more harmonious image overall. Yeah, I agree too. If you can make the face pop out more than what's going on beyond it because you, you took painstaking detail in a lot of the other stuff. So if you could just make the face push. One thing I really do like is your minimal use of color and it kind of creates a little looking pattern like a little seashell kind of shape with the reds and the pinks and that's something that makes this piece a lot more interesting than if you would not done that. Um, with this watercolor painting this is a great example of very well rendered um, control of watercolor as well as using those complementary colors for the shadows and um, transition of hues making it a very interesting um, spatial balance between everything. And I like it as well as it's a very good, this person's on a, a good path to illustration because when I read the title and read the piece, it's kind of like I wanted to read the book. Um, the one thing I will mention is um, with the gradations are very great, but I think with an illustration of some sort you need some kind of hard line carrying you through the piece maybe like a hard ridge on the tree and a hard fold so it makes you even move your eye more around the piece um, but otherwise it's you got your soft tone and your shadings are just great so I find this one really interesting for the fact that the cubes in the background are also in the foreground um, breaking up the space a little bit differently, having um, that sense of a, a stylized cubist kind of approach with it. Um, the face itself, um, there's a confliction of like where the lighting is happening, one side being a little bit darker, yet the hair on the other side is darker. So just um, those subtle um, details with um, more observation would be needed to really um, control uh, where the, your light source is on this particular piece. What I like about this piece is kind of the organic versus the geometric. 
And uh, I think that's really nice in how you can put a flat shape in front of organic piece and create space with it. Um, one thing I would like with these uh, black pieces in the front is almost if you added more with different transparencies so it's kind of floating around and helping you move your eye instead of just the flat black. Right. Beautiful rendering of those eyeballs, by the way. Yeah. Our next group of artists is from Fargo Davies uh, High School. Um, this piece, I kind of go back and forth questioning the two elements of design here. Um, they're not quite working in a harmonious level together, in my personal opinion. Um, maybe um, controlling your temperature of color with this water liquid so that it feels like it's interacting in the midst of the skull. Right now it's sitting on the surface and competing with it overall. But um, the positive and negative space between the subject matter is really nicely rendered. I like the positioning of it. And I, I kind of like the contrast of the liquid against the bone. Um, uh, the one thing I'm having trouble with is the liquid stands out so much and then the bone shape melts right back into the background. So I think what would really help is if you actually pulled um, and lightened up your skull so it's kind of separate from the background and you can still keep the liquid texture on the outside, but it would really help to separate the actual skull from the background. A little bit more bump or pop. Right. The, the next piece is uh, digital imagery. Um, I really enjoy radial perspectives um, in format, especially with design. Um, it's one of those formats that easily gets ignored, and that's why I find radial perspective intriguing. Um, your black, red, and white color combination um, works really well with this particular piece. This flat color that's not quite black but not gray, maybe a little green. Um, I think if you really bump that up, um, either going more of a higher chroma or um, just a value transition of that color choice would help create a spatial difference? Uh, for, for me, I think it's a great illustration, but I agree with Jay here, is bumping up that different color in the background might help just to add variety, just to make it more interesting to look at. Um, but also though, I like the sensitivity of your lines and you have started to uh, show good for um, for graphic material, you've showed good use of your line. And yeah, about my biggest criticism would just be bumping up that color. I think it would just make it a little bit more interesting instead of faded back and blending in. Oh, and this piece, <clears throat> I really like that you're working from dark to light. Uh, um, and your hand here is just rendered excellent excellently the the bottom hand with these really subtle blacks and um, and the highlights and even the veins on the wrist and then um, there there's a little problem of foreshortening in these fingers right here but uh, the attention to detail is really good especially with like the little specks of hair on on the arms um, but then it kind of it kind of feels to me like you lost interest with the detail on these little diamond pieces. But all in all, this is very great and very nice use of uh, working very dark. It's very difficult to work very dark too. Right. I also enjoy um, the placement within your subject matter and the scale, um, allowing you know your eye goes straight to that circular energy but yet there's a nice activation on different levels overall 
that makes an intriguing story makes me want to look at it more and understand this moment of either embracing or disconnecting yeah. all right this trump Lyle color um image very nicely rendered this is a great example of the artist's eye and ability of control of its of their media and understanding of color um, is represented and rendered super well here. Um, even the transparency of the tape, um, just the overall observation and control of your composition is just really nicely done. I don't really have a lot of, I don't have anything to say on a way of improving or not being dis I'm not disconnected by any of this piece whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, this is a a very fine example of someone that has mastered observation, color, and technique. I mean, this is very beautiful done, including the detail of the frame that the pieces are taped to. Um, makes very interesting but the trump oil is just the understanding of color and reflections and then also uh understanding of sh shadow and um and saturation and hues uh it's just a very All great right. piece i would say this particular artist has found their niche yeah when it comes to keep working that focus. would be my criticism yeah. keep working in this direction Right. <laughs> and even maybe in explore with oil paint, since yeah. you already understand these concepts with your dry media, yeah. push it into that wet media world. Our next piece is called Little Brother. This drawing is very nicely rendered too. Another artist that found their niche with their media and control of that media and understanding of every little observation. At first glance, through the plastic, I wasn't sure if this was digital or actually hand done with a graphite. That shows that control of the artist right there. Yeah, yeah we had to take it apart to see if there's any sheen of the graphite. Um, <clears throat> and just your, your uh, control with sensitivity, but yet the understanding of the undershading of things. Um, a little bit creative with uh, getting the highlights in, but I like the highlights because they actually make it look like there's liquid in the eye. Um, and uh, yeah, just a great piece. And you could achieve those nice bright whites without using a liquid white out. Um, and it, if you're going to use it, really have nice control of it because sometimes that can actually work against you. Yeah. Just, just watch. It works really well here, but you know, don't get too carried away with it. Right. Our um, last piece for the day is a print. Print, and um, one thing that impresses me about this is how sensitive your lines are that you've cut out of the block. A lot of people would cut through those lines or make a mess of them, and so that the, these lines are very nicely printed and cut. Um, very simple. That nice control of where the shadow to ground this figure a little bit. It's a little bit more of a fat line versus these nice thin lean lines. Um, shows your control as an um, artist and a printmaker for that matter. Um, having that graphic like design and control and the variation of sizes to keep that intriguing into that space and very clean printing i like that it was very good and clean and very very just this purifying kind of image to look at